EIN is an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education and networking sessions during our Q&As and gratitude circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have a newly released app called Entrepreneurs International Network. So to download them on your mobile phones, just head on to Google Play or App Store and find entrepreneurs, intl.network to get access to a lot of other pieces of education. And if you go to our official website, that is eintalks.com, you will be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So today's event will run for 90 minutes and we'll have our speaker give his talk for 45 minutes and you will receive a private chat reminder of the time left for your talk. After that, we'll have a 15 minute Q&A portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our audience to share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And after that, we'll be wrapping up and close the event by 530 Pacific. And with that, let's go to our amazing speaker for today, Patrick Diamond. He is a business turnaround coach and motivational speaker. And with his expertise in AI and business strategy, Patrick helps entrepreneurs thrive. So now let's experience his engaging talk on unleashing AI to transform your business and achieve remarkable results. Patrick, our virtual stage is all yours. Okay, great. How's everybody doing? Thank you for that intro, by the way. Good to be here. Uh, let me try and switch my view here so I can see everybody. Uh, all right. Nice to see everybody here. Thanks for joining us. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about AI. Uh, but first, just a little bit, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about how this all, how I ended up here. Uh, and and a little bit about my journey. So, and I'm going to ask also that you bear with me a little bit. This is the first time I'm doing this version of this talk. And uh, it was kind of short notice on it. So we've thrown some stuff together. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, I think it's going to be good. So, all right. So without any further ado, so let me get my little my little clicker working here. All right. So how many how many people in here are uh, entrepreneurs? So who has an active business? So if you got an, an active business, put I am active. Type I am active into the chat. And if you're working on it, put I'm working on it. How about that? So I can just get a little bit of a feel for what we got. All right. So we got quite a few people here that are active entrepreneurs. Awesome. Active and working on it. All right, Mike. Great. Okay. And I'm also going to ask, so uh, experience level with AI. So if you are already using AI in some form or another, uh, and you're using it every single day, give me a 10, put a 10 in there. If you haven't used it yet at all, uh, and you're still figuring it out, give me a one. Uh, and if it's somewhere in between, give me that number as well. So we've got, ah, we got quite a mix here. So, all right, great. This is awesome. So we got a great, a great mix here. All right. So I'm doing here what I really love. So I like to, this is kind of play for me. So I like to do things a little bit interactive. Is that okay with everybody? I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you guys into it. And one of the best ways we can do this uh, is, is by showing you actually how um, uh, we're actually gonna demonstrate how to use it. So no matter which way you put it, Succeeding as an entrepreneur or business owner is hard, right? So depending on the statistics that you buy into, anywhere from 70 to 90% of businesses are going to fail before they hit their stride. Now, I know this all too well. I went from growing up on a goat farm in Ohio, if you could believe that or not, uh, to building my first million dollar valuated business in my early 20s. Now, I worked incredibly hard on everything except for myself. So on the outside, it looked like I was doing great. I mean, I had a high profile skyrocketing business. Uh, I had, got to travel all over. I had two cars, swanky apartment in West Hollywood, California. But on the inside, I was actually dying. So I was binging on alcohol and eventually drugs to numb myself. 
In 2007, I remember waking up in the intensive care unit at Cedar sinai Hospital with tubes coming out of my throat. And now for most people, that might have been enough to tell them that they were on the wrong track. But I like to go big, playful out. And so for me, it wasn't. So I'd go another two years before everything would collapse around me and I would fall so far that I'd find myself with extreme depression. I'd spend almost a year and a half living on Skid Row in Los Angeles, and I would spend my 30th birthday in jail. So now I'd eventually climb my way back up, but after being declared permanently disabled and told that I would never work again due to my depression and having seen and worked with over 20 different doctors and therapists, I was incredibly lucky to have stumbled upon a life coach and she was able to help me see things from a different light. And, you know, also really helped me work with the logic of my mind. I came to figure out that the problems that I was facing, they weren't, it wasn't that there was anything really wrong with me. The challenges were really the way that I was looking at things. And it was my limited perspective. Now you might be wondering, okay, I thought we we're here to talk about AI. How is this relevant? Well, don't worry. It's going to become clear here in just a second. So now back on that, knowing that I literally have gone from CEO to Skid Row and back to CEO. But the funny thing is that it would take me more, it would take me more than eight years to continue on. I'd start a lot more businesses. I started 13, I've started 13 businesses in general. Um, but it would take all that time to figure out that I never really wanted to be a CEO in the first place. So has anyone else been there? Maybe you've, you've worked really incredibly hard, maybe even burnt yourself out, uh, maybe another business, uh, you know, and all that to realize that it wasn't that great, or maybe came with a lot of baggage. You didn't really want it in the first place. If you've been there, put been there in the chat. Now, <clears throat> looking back there were two critical things that I was missing. And for years, I would blame the spectacular failure of my business, myself on external things. I would say it was resources. I remember this was in 2008. We were in the middle of a $5 million funding round. And so that was my big thing. I love to blame it all on. I would say, oh, you know, the, the financial collapse. And, uh, right, but really... The thing that I was really missing was resourcefulness. It wasn't resources, it was resourcefulness. And, and Tony Robbins taught me that. Uh, but I felt like I had tried everything, that I was stuck. And, and frankly, I was frozen in fear of failure and in analysis paralysis. That was my thing. I mean, if I had back all the time that I've spent just sitting around waiting on things to be perfect, there, I can't even say how many millions of dollars I would have today. I wouldn't be here. I mean, I would love to be talking to you guys anyway, but I would just be in a different place. Um, <laughs> and uh, I, I would uh, be on a beach maybe somewhere. Uh, but the other thing that I was missing was a trusted confidant to you know, that had experience to turn to, someone who understood what I was going through, someone who could kind of guide me with confidence and help me see things from a dis different perspective. So if I'm really being honest also, there was a third critical thing that was missing, which was self-awareness and a humble nature, but that's a whole nother talk. So we're not going into that today. <laughs> and some people might, might know what I mean by that. Uh, as we grow up, things change, right? But now, I mean, I know I'm incredibly, incredibly lucky, not just to have survived and overcome the challenges that I face, but to be here in front of you, living the life of my dreams and doing what I absolutely love. Uh, and I think some of you guys here know um, Iman. Uh, I heard some talk earlier about him. So Iman, uh, the original founder. So Iman is actually my mentor. And I've just, in the past eight months, I... I was doing my coaching kind of on the side for a long time. I had a business in Mexico and uh, I'm going to be honest, I hated it. <laughs> I thought that I loved it. I thought that it, I, it came with all these great things, but I just wasn't happy. And so, so to be here today, I am extremely excited uh, that this is what I do all day now. Uh, is talking to people like you guys, you know, lead entrepreneurs, seeing them rocket forward. Uh, so, uh, it, I mean, that's my dream. 
And it's been coming true because I listened to myself. But you know, today, again, like I said, I spent my 30th birthday in jail. So getting to work with, with you guys who are making impact, there's just nothing better than that. I mean, my work is as a coach and a motivational speaker, and it's really all about helping people unlock their true potential. It's about helping people conquer the challenges, guide them towards uh, action, create actionable strategies, and really the mindset that drives incredible success. So so how does AI play into that today? I'm, I feel really blessed that it was almost a dream come true that AI launched around the time that I was really moving my, my coaching consulting business to taking 100% of my time because there's so many ways that I use it. So as a coach, one of the things that I, I use it for is to enhance the experience that my clients have and take them to levels that would have taken me years to get to. So over the past 90 days alone, I estimate that I've achieved 300 hours of additional work that I could not have done without the help of AI. One of the challenges that I had before, and I'm sure that some of you guys have had this experience, um, I wonder anybody here ever um, hired an assistant thinking that that was going to solve their problems and all just to find out that, holy shit, now I have another job, right? So I... <laughs> I've done this multiple times, right? Hired multiple assistants. I'm like, all I need is an assistant. I just don't have enough time. And get get all the, the people I see people talking about, you know, along with the staff and all of this. And, and then we get them and realize that everything has become a tangled mess. It's, it's just way worse, right? So over and over and over again, I would do this. And the last time that I did it, it was four months ago. I hired a, a virtual assistant that we actually had in, in my other company in Mexico. And um, and she came in and and I was already had been so stressed out there for, for so long. But she came in and I remember, what I can really remember is the stress of getting up every day and thinking, oh my God, what is she going to do today? Like, what, what have I given her enough to do? That was stressing me out. That took probably 50% of my energy in the morning, right? So, uh, so I'm, it was, so all of a sudden that I really got into chat GPT and AI and, and it was really awesome to be able to have this, this box, this system there that's not taking any, that's not taking any of my, uh, of my brain energy from that. So so my business is skyrocketing. And so I'm going to, as a, as a result, and so I'm going to show you today how you can do the same with your business. I'm going to help you leverage AI to propel your business yourself to new levels. And I'm going to show you what I do and also how I've come to use it with, uh, with my clients. And we're going to have some fun while we're doing it. So if, if you're with me, put let's have some fun in the chat box right now. Uh, because here's the thing, the best way that I can show you this is actually by doing so when I was telling you, you have to kind of bear with me because I'm going to actually live. I have somebody with me here. I actually have a mentor or a mentee of mine. So Juan Uriel on the chat. So Juan Uriel is coming to us from Mexico City. And Juan Uriel is an incredible young man who, uh, so I've worked with now for several years. I don't know, uh, four or five years, I believe. And uh, he's an impressive young man who uh, is what we call, I know there's a lot of people in Canada, uh, but so are dreamers. So these are people who've been deported from the United States. So when I went to Mexico, one of the causes that I really went there to support were these these young people who've been deported from the United States? They were brought into the U.S. Uh, as children. So Juan was actually brought into the U.S. at eight years old, and uh, so for him it was double trouble. He did not uh, understand the culture or the language. Neither did his parents, uh, and and unfortunately, at 19 years old, got himself in a little bit of trouble, as young people do, and uh, he ended up actually. Uh, being deported back into Mexico and was then there with no real support. So uh, so now Juan Udillo worked in my company for several years and we've just shut that down. So what he's going to be working on now, what we're working on together is a nonprofit organization that is designed to help dreamers when these young people and people are uh, about to be or have been deported uh, it's basically to help them have the support and resources that they need to thrive in either country. 
So here's what we're going to do today. And again, you're going to have to go easy on me because we're actually going to go into, we're going to be using chat GPT and we're going to go from zero. So he and I have been talking about creating this for a while. And mind you, we also have not even been able to run through. We haven't even done a run through on it, but the goal is here that over the next 15 to 20 minutes, we're going to take this nonprofit organization from nothing on paper. We're going to create everything all the way from uh, we're going to go all the way from how we're going to come up with a mission, the vision. Uh, we're going to do our research on it. We're going to create, uh, go into creating agreements. We're going to create our website. We're going to create uh, basically everything soup to nuts that you would need, including business plan, marketing plan, uh, marketing strategy, uh, all of those things through here. So uh, how does this sound? Uh, if you guys are into this, let's say, let's go. Let's, let's have a little let go. Let's go in the chat. And um, again, so this could go, this could go incredibly well, or this could go incredibly uh, rough on me. So, so be easy. Now, I will say, here's the thing. Now, what we're going to do after this, after this component, is it's going to be an even. I'm really, I'm really asking for today. So we're then going to spend some time. We're going to. I'm going to set a timer once we're done with this component, and I'm going to take. Eat, I'm going to have people volunteer. I'm going to share a problem that you have. And we're going to see if you can stump me and stump the AI uh, with uh, in five minutes. We're going to try and overcome that. Now, I should say that one of the reasons that uh, that I really get into AI uh, is there's two two things. One is so one of my degrees was technology, computers, and information systems. But my true passion now, one of the things that I have taught for years as a coach, is communication. So in order to really get the best that you can out of using AI. In this case, we're going to be using a, a chat GPT model, but it, it, it requires being able to think in a different logical perspective. So earlier when I was talking about the fact that, you know, the real problem that I have, why I was using drugs, why I ended up on the streets, all of the, those challenges, it wasn't that I wasn't smart or intelligent. I mean, uh, it was just that I was using the tools incorrectly, right? I was using my thoughts incorrectly. So if you want to get success from using these tools, you have to be able to kind of step out and, and really look at the way that, that these systems think. I mean, we have to be conversational. And in this, and, and today I'm talking mostly about using chat, chat GPT and conversational uh, models, uh, but I mean, they can be incredibly powerful, uh, but just like me, I was, uh, I didn't know how to use my communication. I didn't know how to communicate with myself. So I didn't know how to communicate with the world and I was getting crap results, right? So, so the first thing we're gonna take you through is uh, we're talking about two important concepts to start, which is priming and prompting, right? So we're gonna go through, uh, so you just wanna write those down and we're gonna come back to those. So if we can, uh, so Keisha, if we could spotlight Uriel, Juan Uriel here, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, I'm going to take you through a map here and I'm going to need to share my screen. So I'm going to show you the tool that, this is a tool that I use, going to be created in a way that I work with people, uh, either new entrepreneurs or entrepreneurs. So I do turnaround coaching. So I go into businesses that are failing uh, or I work with uh, people who are, I work with a lot of people who are burnt out. Uh, and they're not able to getting the results that they want. They need to scale their business. But if they do that, that they're going to end up basically killing themselves. <laughs> uh, and so I'm going to, I'm going to share a little bit of that strategy with you too. So let me go ahead and uh, share my screen here and I'm going to work through this with Uriel. So Uriel, are you there? I'm right here. All right. So everybody wave at Uriel. This is his first time on, uh, this is his first time here. He's, he's in put on the spot. So Uriel, by the way, is an aspiring motivational speaker as well. And when you hear his story, you'll, it'll make a lot of sense as to why he's doing that. So are you ready, Uriel? Let yes. me set my timer. All right. So what do you think? Can we do this? Let's set go up for a it. business from nothing all the way uh, to all the way to having everything that we need in, in, just, uh, in just 15 minutes. All right. So, all right. So First off, I'm going to start a 10-minute timer, and we're going to try and uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to make it even a little bit more challenging. Okay, so I'm going to go to eight minutes. So we're going to do eight minutes where we're going to create our we're going to prime and prompt. Okay, we're going to come up with this. So if you guys can see, let's see if you guys can see my screen. 
Hold on, I'm having, let's see if I can get the right one here. All right. Now, do you guys see my screen? Yes? Okay, yes. good, 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 good. All right. Now, so, Uriel, let me start the timer. Now, first, this is what I do with anybody who's uh, we're, we're basically starting a business. We always want to go and start with the end in mind. So, Uriel, I'm going to ask you through this. So, when you think about how you want, when you know, dreamers to uh, to walk away, or describing the organization, I'm sorry. So, what would you what would you say are the word three words you'd want them to use? Uh, the three words that I would like the dreamers to use to describe the organization, it would be family, uh, okay. a place they can call home, uh, and somewhere where uh, they, they have love. Okay. So it would be then um, somewhere they belong. Belong, yeah. Connection okay. could be also. Okay. All right. Now, when someone, let's say an event, putting together an event for this nonprofit. So uh, how do you want, this? so they're walking out of the event and they're going to give three words. So what are three words for how you want them to feel walking out of the event and yourself, especially being the public face of this nonprofit? Okay. Yeah, definitely. So I would want them to feel excited. Uh, another one would be to feel uh, heard or connected, have that connection. Uh, there you go. Okay. Go ahead and give me one more. I think you had one more there. I was excited, heard, and connected. Um, I think that's it for now. Yeah, okay. those that those just. Those All right, let's three. go on to the next one. So, uh, how is it that you want people to so in the community to feel about the organization? They were. I would like to them to feel secured. Uh, that they can trust. Uh, and also, I would like for them to feel uh, connected, connected definitely with the. So you want the community to feel connected to the. Uh, you want the people in the community to feel connected to who or what? Uh, connected to. How do I say it? To the community, uh, to one another, to the dreamers. Okay. All right. And let's say so when you die. So when you, if you die and if you think about at your funeral, so if you were able to view that, so you would want people to, uh, you would want people to say Juan Udiel's, that organization that he and Patrick started was so great because they really what? They really empowered uh, the community. Uh, to do what? They, to, they empowered the community to go after their dreams, to, to help them reach their full potential. Uh, to also to help them, uh, there's, there's a lot of things. It could be uh, what the goal would be like also financial, emotional, help them emotionally, uh, help them uh, feel. One of the main big things that when people come back to Mexico, they feel alone. So, you know, helping them feel that they're not alone, that there's people out there that uh, actually care about them. Um, yeah, so it's along other things. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, and so I'm going to skip around a little bit. So when reporters write about the work the organization does, so imagine that, uh, and you know, I'm, we already had some press along it, along the line. So if a reporter is writing about uh, the work, what would you want them to say? What would you want to be in that article? Yeah, definitely. I would want to say that it it would be inspiring, uh, inspiring for to to others. Uh, also, I would want them to say that um, there's that connection. There's that connection that that helps them bring, will come together to help each other, uh, lift each other up, and also help each other fulfill. You know, if it's a a dream, a professional dream, or a personal dream. They're supported. Okay. Yes. Now, I also want to just show everybody watching here. So now AI in many ways works in a way that we do. So uh, anybody here familiar with something called the reticular activating system? So if you are say yes, 
And I see uh, screen text very small to read, so I'm trying to get that a little bit bigger. So if, if you're familiar with the reticular, reticular activating system, go ahead and put a yes in there. So the reticular activating system, for those of you who aren't familiar, is it's that same system that if you've anybody ever been at a party and uh, across the room you hear somebody say your name, right? So all of a sudden, something, wait, um, did I hear that? It's the same system that let's say you're out there looking to buy a car. And um, and so maybe you're looking at blue Tesla's. It's that same system. And if you've ever bought a car before and you can and you think about that, the fact that once you chose that vehicle, you started to then see that vehicle on the road more and more, uh, more and more frequently. If anybody's had this experience, put I yes, that's me in the chat. So if you've had that experience, then you know that you know, that is the same impact here that basically what. Uh, what we're doing now, the time that we're taking, you know, that taking through this messaging and asking Uriel you know, these questions, this is actually, it's, we're priming him. Anybody know, have you guys noticed how it's coming out of him quicker now? And he's getting better data that is now coming out, right? At the beginning, it started with some words. I primed him with some words. Then notice now he's getting more verbose, Okay. Believe it or not, you're going to have that same experience when utilizing AI systems. The more that you give into them, the richer the content that you give them, the more time you spend up front doing this. This is actually, by the way, the most critical component. This, what we're doing right now, it's what's coming from the human. That's the most important component. Does that make sense? So what we're doing is we're priming the human, and then we're going to go in and we're going to use this data. We're going to go all the way through. We're going to create our website. We're going to create the business plans. We're going to create all those things in 10 minutes by having first taken just five to 10 minutes and really getting clear data out. So I can't stress enough the critical importance of, of putting time into this step. This is where most people fail, and this is where they get junk right? Because they just go in and just kind of type a few things in. The, the, the power of AI, it's just, it's, it's truly incredible, but it's only going to be as good as what we put into it. And so the last thing I'm going to say, Uriel, is as a result of the successful implementation of the organization, what else will change? So what's going to, what, what's the vision? What do you see? What do you see as being different in our world, Juan, Uriel? Uh, definitely building more awareness uh, when it comes to emotional health, uh, also the financial part. Uh, and also one of the things that I vision is that uh, there is that, that bridge that um, unites the, the U.S. and Mexico with entrepreneurs that uh, want, once they, they call themselves dreamers, uh, but just because they're well, somebody is back, well, in this case, uh, Mexico, doesn't mean they're no longer a dreamer. You know, I think dreamer is more of a uh, something that we grew up with. So it's, it's something definitely as a culture. Uh, and then in the long vision, it would be being able to have that bridge between the U.S. and Mexico and, you know, being able to provide opportunities on, on both sides. Okay. In the long run, you want to provide opportunities. Uh for all in both countries. Okay, yes. great. Thanks, Juan. Everybody, let's give Juan a little bit of, of love here in the chat. So let's say thanks, Juan. And uh, like I said, this is uh, he's working on building himself uh, up and he's done a lot of work on himself. He's made an incredible change and uh, and he can use all the support uh, that, we, that we can give him. So I'm gonna switch here now to, now this is the fun part. So I did it under a minute here. Uh, now what we're going to do, we're going to turn just all just what we just had, we're now going to turn this into a complete business in 10 minutes or less, right? So that's the challenge. And so let me stop my timer here, you know, give myself a challenge for another eight minutes. Uh, and so uh, I do need to, let me see here, I'm going to switch. Now, if you are on a smaller screen, this might be, uh, this might be, uh, a little bit challenging. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit easier here. Okay. All right. Just give me one quick second here. I'm going to switch over. And now, now I'm going to, now I'm using the plus version of chat GPT. And so chat GPT, 
I'm uh, I'll provide you with the links and stuff. But if if you haven't used it yet, I said I know that some of you have. But if you haven't, it's basically just it's like a chat bot, but it's been uh, it's it's been programmed, if you will, with a lot of a lot of information from many different sources. One of the great things about it and the way that I'm going to show you how I use it is so I have different books and different guides. And I'm going to say, for instance, Iman Agai is, is my primary mentor. I'm in his lead mastermind program. And so uh, because chat GPT has been primed with all these texts, it actually, I can go in and tell it that I want to create things based off of how he creates things. And I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to switch over now. All right, and we're going to go to. Uh, we're going to now. We're going to start some priming. Now again, priming is just like we just did here. Or think of priming the pump. Okay, we want to. We want to get it ready to go. And so I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So in priming, uh, I'm going to use the data that uh, Uriel had shared here. So I'm going to take these things. Actually, let me make it easier on myself. So I'm going to just open this up over here. Okay. All right. So we're going to take this step and I'm going to type in, I uh, help me to create, actually, let's say help us because it's real and I, okay. Help us to create a nonprofit organization that is designed in order to support those who have been deported from the United States and so that they can overcome their unique challenges. Uh, let's see. So we're going to say, um, let's see, we want uh, dreamers who are members of and served by Wait, oops, we want those whom are served by the organization <laughs> to uh, call it a family, home, and somewhere they belong. We will produce educational content and courses and classes, as well as events, that people will leave feeling excited, heard, and connected. We want people in the community to feel that they have an organization and I'm typing fast, so nobody make fun of my typing here, an organization they can trust which brings them together uh, and the the idea is to create an empowered community where people can feel uh, secure in going after their dreams and to reach their full potential. We want to help people develop their skills financially and emotionally and help them feel that they're not alone, that people care, and that they belong. Juan Uriel Martinez will be the public face of the organization. And it's important to him that reporters, for example, notice I'm being very conversational here, uh, that, and now I'm gonna say, so that reporters, for example, will say that the organization is inspiring and there is connection which helps people bring, helps people come together, be uplifted, and find fulfillment, no matter if it's a professional or personal dream they're, they're working towards. 
Juan Uriel sees a vision, a future world where dream, dreamers, where people are aware of the unique challenges, including emotional health issues that dreamers face, as and an entrepreneurial bridge that unites the US and Mexico. I'll fix that. So that dreamers can belong and thrive anywhere. Okay. All right. So now I've got some errors in here, but it's not a big deal because the system's going to sort it out. Now, notice I was very conversational. Okay. Uh, and, and I want to continue to prime. So I'm first going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in, right, a little bit here from Uriel's, Juan Uriel's uh, bio. And so I, uh, recommend that you do the same on anything you're so I actually create I have different prime templates created so that I don't have to go when I start a new chat uh, and uh, so that I don't have to go over and over and over again uh, with with uh, priming it. So I'm uh, now I'm gonna paste this in for him. All right, so just one second. So here's his uh, vision. So I'm going to place his mission statement and uh, what was put in earlier. So I'm going to put this here, Juan Uriel's personal mission statement is. Now, I'm also going to say next, I will post, paste in the mission statement of co-founder Patrick Diamond. I'm going to say, let me know when you're ready. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to continue the conversation with it. If I put too many things in there all at once, it's going to start spitting back data to me. And because I want to prime it well, I want to ensure that uh, I want to ensure that it is uh, that it's that it's got all the data before it starts to try and spit some things out. So now I'm going to cost I'm going to paste in uh, just uh, something from one of my chats. Or from one of my uh, my talks, so I'm actually just going to use that instead. Um, all right, now here we go. I've hit enter. Now it's starting to spit out a couple of things, but from this, I'm going to go into what do we need? Vision, mission, statement, right? So using the principles, this is where we refer to other works, and this is where things get really interesting. So using the principles of Stephen Covey's seven habits series write a um you know what actually i'm gonna one thing i'm gonna do before this because i want to prime it a little bit more i'm gonna first ask it before i do that i'm gonna say provide some statistics from uh from uh from reliable sources okay that show how to uh, so we put, provide some statistics from reliable sources uh, that show the need for this type of organization, give references, okay? Now, so now I'm further priming it, I'm having it go and now get statistics. So even though I might know this data, I'm having it pull it into the front of its, basically the front of its memory, right? Uh, so now I'm gonna say things like provide statistics about the emotional health issues that dreamers face. This is now, this is me priming, priming, priming. All right. Again, I might, I might have all the data in the world on this. Okay. But, and I want it to start going out and searching for more things. I might even put, uh, give me a uh, list of six uh, of six uh, scientific studies that speak to the challenges faced by society uh, of our dreamers in the, uh, let's see, of our dreamers. Okay. Again, priming, priming, priming. 
Uh, but I'm going to see if, so even though it's going to say things like, uh, you know, my, my stuff is limited, I'm still getting it to pull some different things up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, give me mission statement based off of using the pre mission statement, using the principles around. Okay. The seven series. Okay. Boom. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Our mission is to empower individuals to become proactive leaders of their lives, embracing Stephen. Uh, <laughs> and hold on here. Now, you have to be careful with this, right? So what happened was, give me a potential mission statement for the organization. Now, the way that I put it in there, it got confused. Use the principles taught by Stephen Covey for creating a mission statement as a template. There we go. Juan, can you read this out loud? What does that say? Okay, you're muted. Okay, I'll read it. Uh, Our mission is to empower, go ahead, read it real quick, roll through it. Our mission is to empower dreamers, undocumented, undocumented immigrants brought to the United States as children by providing a supportive and inclusive community where they can overcome challenges and realize their full, release their full potential through educational resources, mentorship, and advocacy. Advocacy, we strive to foster personal growth, resilience, and sense of belonging. Grounded in the principles of integrity, empathy, and collaboration, we aim to create pathways for dreamers to thrive socially, academically, and professionally by bridging the gap between cultures and empowering individuals to embrace their unique backgrounds. We envision a future where dreamers can contribute to society, achieve their dreams, and inspire others to create a positive change. How does that sound? Does that sound like something you want to be involved in? Yes, definitely. So if those of you here uh, think that this sounds good and you would like to be involved in something like this, go ahead and uh, put yes into the chat. Now, now it's very simple. Now everything is downhill. Uh, now, so what else do we need? Uh, how about a uh, business plan? So create a one page business plan based on the one page plan strategy book uh, where Let's see where we will sell courses and uh, provide income streams from that as well as other uh, potential sources. Okay. Boom. So here we go. Now, mission, vision, key objectives, deliver edu exceptional educational content, cultivate and support a community, generate revenue streams. So right here, it's you have everything that you need. All right, revenue streams broken down, grants and scholarships, marketing and promotion, online presence. So right here with just, and mind you, you know, it just took us a few minutes there to create all of these, uh, all of these components. Now going a little bit further. So how about, what else are we going to need? So we need a marketing plan. Okay. So there's my marketing plan. Now we're going to need other things. So target audience. Uh, it, it, it's going to spit all this different stuff out. Now, what about uh, press releases, right? Create a press release to garner support of the U.S. Of, how about of U.S. governments, local governments, and uh, other influential people? Right, but be, and because we primed it so well, it's going to, it can spit all this stuff out. It goes even further than this. All right. So look at that. By partnering, you know, local governments can play. Now, oh, we forgot something. We need a name, right? So create a list of potential names and taglines for the organization using the print as, how about, let's say this, uh, who's uh, your favorite marketing person? Anybody here want to put somebody in the chat? Who's their favorite marketing person? Whoever's the, fa the first and fastest one to do it will, uh, what do you got? Somebody said here, uh, we have Seth Godin. Good. I was hoping somebody would go with that. So, <laughs> uh, based uh, on the principles, now notice put here, and as if it was 
written by Seth Godin. Okay, dream forward, empowering dreamers to reach their full potential, belong, belong bright, lighting the path for dreamers, thrive dream, nurturing dreams, fostering success. Uh, so here we have a whole list to go through. Uh, now, we are going to need also, we're going to need a business or we're going to need a website, right? So uh, I personally really like to set up websites along as if they were uh, done by Donald Miller here. So marketing made simple. So I'm going to say create a website wireframe using proven industry leading tactics uh, by proving industry leading tactics by Donald Miller. From his book, Marketing Made Simple, uh, I need a, uh, so we're gonna have the header, stakes. We're going to have the, uh, let me see, uh, let me see, it's header, stakes. And of course, in this moment, I forgot exactly what they were. So I'm just put a uh, value proposition. All right, so it's going to list this all. If I wanted to, I can even have it create code for it. But I'm not going to do that right now. We're limited on time. So uh, I can also go into create a 30-day uh, marketing plan, media plan for social media, and suggest 20 articles. All right, so going through here, it's going to give me the content strategy. Right. And now this is actually going to be more of the the actual layout for it. But as far as content goes, that's coming in here at the end. So different articles, I can even say create a so I might say create an introduction video uh, script. That also can go on the website. Boom. There's all of that. Now, I'm also going to need Odiel and I will need to create an agreement together. Right, so uh, help suggest a fill-in uh, partnership agreement for founding a nonprofit in the U.S. In this, uh, as we have laid out, cut. So every single thing I have built, every single thing that we need, it 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 will lay it all out. Uh, and I mean, I've built my, I've built two businesses already so far in just a couple of days, uh, with using all of this, uh, using everything that, that it has, uh, just built into chat GPT. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop there. And what I want to do is I want to go now and ask, so somebody in the chat or is, can somebody raise their hand or their digital hand if they want. Um, so who here has a problem in their business? So we're going to move into the problem solving real quick. Uh, and I, I see these questions, so I will, we'll go back in there. So if somebody could share with me a business problem. And so in wrapping up here, I just want to go and try and solve that real quick. We're going to come back to questions. I know we, we put a whole bunch of stuff out there. Uh, I will cover these different questions. I know it really was like, it's a fire hose. Uh, so, so I'm going to go Shannon Bobo, go to you real quick. Uh, before we circle back to the questions on uh, on everybody else here. So go ahead, Shannon. You're muted. There you go. Okay. Um, like with my business, there's so much competition. So how would that, I mean, because like, I feel like putting that, um, putting everything that you put in, I feel like every single other person, I have a casting business and I feel like other, every other person can basically say the same thing. So what would be a distinction in my case? Well, you know the I mean? distinction, so let me actually cover that. The distinction is actually, it's that's that whole priming. You know, oh. I mean, th that is your, what you going to the end and, and taking that time in the beginning, you know, that time that it takes to really think Think, visualize the outcome, visualize people leaving. Another thing you can do is I tell people to write three reviews. So if I were you, I would be, if you have a casting business, I would say, write three reviews for uh, whoever you serve, what they're going to write about your business. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. So they're going to say, so write that review because that is, that's the special thing. 
Yeah, the, the AI is there, but it's all what you put in it. It's all about the priming. So it's kind of like it, it, when we're saying something as, as you are there, uh, you know, it's kind of like if we're out there dating, for instance, uh, we could say, well, everybody, you know, everybody um, goes to this one bar, but we all bring our unique perspective, right? We all bring something unique. So that's, that's the real goal. The more you put in it up front, 80% of your time should really go into thinking about what it, the outcomes. I mean, uh, you know, visualize how people will feel interacting with your brand. Get that down. Really work through your mission and your vision statement. Read the book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Read, you know, read Donald Miller's books, for instance. Go through all these different things. Get really clear on that, on the why. Another great one, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why. Focus on that. 80% of your time should go into that. Only 20% should go into the AI. Does that make sense? Okay. So, um, so I'm going to, uh, and, and uh, Keisha, we have a, a we're going to have a couple minutes to answer the questions of people in the chat, right? Yes. Um, okay. So, uh, cause I'll just, uh, spin it. I'm going to go on. Okay. If you, uh, want to wrap, um, up to yeah. 5 p.m., then we will jump on into the question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so let, let me wrap uh, up and, and just, just saying a couple things in closing here. So, um, I think the big thing that I want to get across is that it all comes down to one thing, really, at the end of the day, and having again started 13 different businesses. Uh, and that is really, it's taking massive action. I mean, while tools, and this is also for you, Shannon. So while tools like ChatGPT can help us put together a lot of information and content uh, in a very rapid, in a very rapid fashion, uh, it means nothing if we allow ourselves to sit in that perfectionism, waiting for the perfect time or seeking approval of others. Uh, so whether you're just starting out or you're revamping your business or going in a new and completely direction, uh, completely different direction altogether, start messy. That's what I actually, I know we're talking about AI, but I would hope that people can take away from it is do it now. Take action now. It took me an extra 10 years than it really needed to for me to be here today talking to you and living every day like it's my dream, waking up excited, going to bed excited. You know, and it, it used to be what kept me up at night was worrying about everything that was going wrong. And now 95% of the time, if I'm having trouble sleeping, it's because I'm so freaking excited. Uh, you know, so if I can do it, so can you. You're already enough. This AI is just a new tool. The, the thing that kept me back, the, the whole challenge was that I just was scared and I wouldn't act. So if anything, what a, what ChatGPT, for instance, and AI has done for me is it's helped me just create stuff really quickly. Uh, and now I just implement it. I just do it because it's good enough. <laughs> because the one thing that people don't have is a lot of people, they're going to be stuck in that perfectionism. I mean, 95% of people, I just got done interviewing 30 different entrepreneurs. That was the biggest thing people were, were scared about was, was failing. Right. So just remember, you're more powerful than any AI will ever be. And those unique experience and viewpoints and the perceptions, that's the real art. So, you know, if you're an entrepreneur already, I mean, you're already an artist. So, you know, we're entrepreneurs at the most exciting time in history. We've just created, basically, we can create a whole business now in 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Our possibilities are truly endless. So uh, what I really hope that you could take away is whether you decide to use AI as a tool to get past analysis paralysis or to supercharge your content creation or help you with strategy and planning. I mean, remember that success and momentum ultimately comes down to one thing. And that, again, it's taking action. It's taking massive action. And that's my challenge to everybody. You already have the power. You saw that the most important component of it was taking that time in the beginning, not the actual util utilization of the tool. The most important part is getting that artistry out. So you've always had the power. But now that you have this tool, what will you do with it?
And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that very informative talk. And uh, thank you, Thank, thank you for Uriel. bearing with me. <laughs> it was great. It was wonderful. And thank you, Uriel, for um, um, helping uh, Patrick with the examples. It was great. Now let's head on to our question and answer portion. We encourage the audience to ask questions by raising their hands on their screen or using the raise hand feature here on Zoom. But we already have questions I see here in the chat boxes. So maybe we can um, maybe we can cater those questions first. And then after that, we can go ahead and uh, raise your hands. And then yeah, so whoever Patrick chooses, um, we will unmute them. Okay. Okay. So it's a Mike Fisher asked about what about creating mailing lists. So I would be curious as to uh, I'd be curious is is Mike here? I'd be curious as to uh, uh, as to what the the question was around that. So um, not knowing if if he's here or not, but uh, so if the question is, can we use it to create mailing lists like from from data? Uh, it's not going to have that data. It's it, 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 it's going to be able to give you generally information about who you could contact. You could say, who are 50 different organizations that maybe would be good for me to try? Now, here's one thing, and this is kind of gold that I didn't mention. On, didn't mention. So right now, I'm working on, uh, here in the community, creating the West Hollywood Small Business Coalition. One of the challenges that we have in the organization or in the in our community is that there's all this regulation that's come down and none of us really know what uh, what we can and can't do as business owners. So we're creating, my organization is actually creating, we're taking chat GPT and, and you can build, you can take your own data and mesh it into it. So we're actually uh, taking all of the West Hollywood municipal code and we are programming it into our own version if you will, of, of a chat bot with chat GPT. So we're priming it with tons of data and we're making it so that a business owner, instead of having to read through all of the municipal code can just put in, well, okay, what is, um, I wanna put up a sign that's this big, can I do that? And it's gonna say yes or no. So even with mailing lists, if you wanna create a mailing list, uh, you can actually use a service where you can take all your CRM data, you can take everything, all your customer lists, you, you can build it all, you can dump it all in there and have across your organization, you can either internally be asking it, I want to talk to this customer, when's the last time we talked to them? What are their preferences? Right. So, so in a mailing list, you, you could actually, you can uh, in a way do that. And you could also scrape data from organizations or things that you belong to and you could dump that in as well. Um, let's see. And then someone else said, I feel like all the websites treat me like they hate me. What can I do? Uh, let's, so this is Mary. I'm not really sure what Mary means here. Uh, can ChatGPT help with the priming? Hmm. The book and marketing professionals connection you made was from your ability to connect all the dots. So that was Christina asked that. It will help you to some extent. It's kind of like, you have to think about it that you've got kind of this unicorn around you that it's still so new that even the developers, it will do things that they don't know that it will. Um, so the more you play with it, the more you engage with it, the more you, you just, I mean, I, I, I spent hundreds of hours just testing it and playing with it and, and, and pushing its limits. So there's not, nothing can be hurt by pushing its limits. <laughs> go in there and go crazy with it. I mean, see what you can get it to do. Uh, again, we are the create. We're the creators. We're the we're the artists. Uh, let me see. So, a nonprofit versus uh, for profit. How to decide and how to set a pricing. Uh, let me see. Did I did I miss someone else? Let me see. So, nonprofit versus for profit. How to decide? I would ask ChatGPT. That's that's what I would do. And I just didn't get to that point to be able to do that. But I would. Um, I would be asking it and I will ask it, should we form a nonprofit versus a for-profit? What are some criteria to consider? And it's gonna help me, it's gonna help me do that. Uh, and so uh, for instance, right now it's saying, what's your mission purpose, what's your funding, all these different things. So, uh, and by the way, this thing has passed the bar 
in, in most locations. Uh, so I don't use it as a replacement for my attorney, but I do, uh, I use it as a way to save on legal costs because I actually will have it, I will ask it the questions and I'll have it create uh, contracts for me. And then I take that to my attorney, right? I mean, I'd rather have the robot work it out than my attorney or my CPA even because I have an international business. So my, my CPA is in Canada. Right. And he's $250 an hour. So I'd rather have the robot figure it all out and, and go. So that's helpful. And, and anybody else uh, have a question uh, that's uh, in here? Anybody uh, want to raise their hands? Got all kinds of, uh, let's see. I see people. Anybody, anybody want to ask a question live <laughs> through the chat? I see. Okay. Yeah. Feel free to raise your hands on yeah. your screen if you can see the raise hand feature people, on Zoom. So. Yeah. And someone else said, "I had a free, I had a free email extract tool. Then I got attacked by tech companies. I can't do. Do you? Do only your people get funding? I'm an American and a dreamer. Make it make sense. It's that bad here. Okay. I'm not sure what the question. If there was a question there." <laughs> And uh, Brent said, can you show how to integrate it with Google Docs? Okay. Um, and so Brent, are you here, Brent? Because I have a follow-up question to that. Here yes, there he is. So Brent, if you could, could you unmute? And uh, I just, I have a question. So, so could you tell me just a little bit more about the use case? What do you want to, tell me what you want to do. Sorry, sorry, Patrick. Um, no, I don't have a I don't have a particular use case, but um, I've seen some examples shown on videos and found it nearly impossible to keep up with uh, how they did what they did. Um, yeah, yeah. All I all I'm left with is the sense that it can be very very powerful if you know how to integrate it. Um, yeah, maybe maybe you can do something with spreadsheets or something like that, mm -hmm. just, to, just to show kind of a, a real world integration, because I think that's pretty powerful. Yeah, so let me let me just, uh, let me preface, give a little bit more info around that, because this is an important thing. So it is, I mean, evolving so very quickly, just in me looking for the ways that we could build out our own custom chatbot for the Business Coalition. I found three different organizations that could do it, ranging from $1,000 to $39. Now, come to find out that actually the $39 option is actually the easiest to use. They all do the same thing, but because it's hard to, uh, because it's so new, whatever you, you search for, it, it can be very hard to figure out who you should go with. Uh, so... I think if what you're asking there is, are you meaning to pull the data from the spreadsheet? Is that what you mean? Um, <clears throat> sort of similar, I guess, to you know the 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 person up the list there who talked about making mailing lists and that type of thing. Uh, I think just some sort of an example where you can show using Chat GPT to manage data within a spreadsheet, I think that would mm -hmm. be really helpful for people to see. And I yeah, sent you- that's a great- I, I sent you a private message too about another um, bot thing. Okay, yeah, I, 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 uh, I'm gonna save the chat and I'll write that down. So I will definitely, uh, that's a great thing to integrate. And I know you're not prepared for it. It's kind of a big out of left field kind of a thing, so. I didn't mean to make you flustered if, if it's kind of making you flustered because oh. it makes me flustered. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put actually, I, I have been doing a lot of research on that even just in the past few days. So mm -hmm. I'm actually going to put anyway, a uh, my, my Calendly link. So uh, I'm going to put that in there. If you want to just, I, I'd love to actually see what you've come up with and just have a little chat on that. But I'm happy to walk people through and and just... Uh, bang out a business plan or or, or any kind of uh, any totally kind fair. of strategy there. Yeah, uh, totally fair. I don't have one of those questions ready though. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank, well, I, thank, I, I'm going to put my Calendly link in there. So uh, I'd love to chat with people who and see other use cases, how people are using it too. But cool, there, you. there, there are, there are a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's just coming out every single day. Yeah, that's true. Every single day. No joke. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll let someone else chat. Thanks, Brett. Okay. Anybody else? Any other question? Kesha, do you have a question? Um, none for me. <laughs> but no? it was amazing. If uh, nobody else would like to ask any other question, we can head on to our gratitude circle. So uh, you may want to share your takeaways of today's talk or uh, you want to share your gratitude to our speaker for today. I can go first. Awesome. Okay. I, I've been taking some notes on my stickies. This is like a very structured way of using chat GPT. I've been using it for a few of my job searches, interview prep, and some more around like revolving in the same space. Uh, and I'm more like a data enthusiast, currently learning use cases of generative AI, exploring uh, the data storytelling. Uh, and this is just amazing. This is what I needed, I think so. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, it, it really is a great way to, uh, uh, if you you can build a, uh, basically build a sample of your writing and then just tell it to write stories in your own tone. It's, it is awesome. Thank you, Akash. Thank you. So anybody else? Well, for me, I would like to, to say my gratitude to Patrick. Thank you so much for uh, giving us uh, your topic for our platform. It's really a valuable uh, topic for a lot of our entrepreneurs right now. So thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Oh, we have your yell. Go ahead, your yell. Uh, yeah, definitely. I want to show the my gratitude towards Patrick uh, to having me uh, in, here. Also to take the time to go over the, the plan for the, well, we do plan to have this uh, done in the future, the near future. So it's something that we, it is that we do want to plan uh, and working towards. Uh, so I just want to go, my gratitude to Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, I saw someone asked about that. I, I don't think we, we covered that, but make sure you reach out to that person. Maybe you got a supporter. Hi, oh, uh, James Baldock has just uh, came in the call. Yes, we will have a recording of today's event. Uh, it will be announced to everyone as long as you opted in to our registration link. So you will receive uh, the recording of today's event. So if uh, nobody else has any other uh, takeaways that they'd like to share or questions that they have, um, I, we, I want to thank everyone and uh, for coming and showing up at today's event. Well, our, our next event will be announced tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, uh, on the same meetup groups. And we um, and to sign up for that, you can uh, go to our uh, web page or we will send you the registration link. So once more, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Patrick, for being here and at today's event. And we will see you on the next one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Goodbye. Thanks once again. Bye-bye.